For this project, we converted a grave digger to a fire truck. I built this fire truck for my daughter for Christmas. Except the grave digger power wheel for this project is not new. I found this for free on OfferUp, and that's a good thing because this thing cost almost $500 brand new. But as always, free comes with the price, and that price is usually time because it looked like this. Oh, by the way, in the background, there is the traction control power wheel that I made a while ago. You can check out the video if you'd like. Anyway, the person I got it from said all the parts should be there, and I've never known a person to lie about that. The best part of this power wheel is the frame. It's made of metal, and it's very, very sturdy. The first challenge was to remove all of the old faded stickers. I just used a heat gun and some persuasion to get them all off. Instead of sanding the plastic smooth again, I just remelted the plastic with the heat gun and it turned out pretty good. Then I covered everything with a bit of primer. I wanted everything to be white and red like a normal fire truck. So I did the base coat with a white and painted the rest with red. Then I applied clear coat. And along with my Christmas spirit, the paint started to crack. I learned that if you have a cold part sitting in a garage all day and you try to paint it with room temperature paint, this guy gets to do a lot of wet sanding. After painting all the parts, I then moved on to the hubcaps with chrome. I'm very impressed how good it turned out because usually when they say chrome, they really mean just glossy gray. I thought the frame would look really good black with red shocks, so that's what I done did. After the paint cracking mistake, everything is now looking pretty decent. Now onto the electronic bits. Every fire truck needs a siren. So I found a premium quality one for $19 and their ad sarcastically says that it is perfect for all emergency vehicles, which I believe them, except they just forgot one little word. <laughs> Plus, they call it a hooter. In any case, I wanted to interface the original horn button to play a custom hoot. So now the question is, how do I interface my Arduino with the horn to play a custom sound? Looking at an oscilloscope, you can see the pulse that creates the sound which is really cool because that means whatever waveform we send it, it will play. All I had to do was connect the Regino to the board inside the horn, which by the way, wasn't attached to anything. It was just floating around inside there. There are lots of examples for PZO speakers to play music. So it took no time at all to get our horn to play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Next, we needed some super bright flashy lights. The biggest problem with these lights is that they are only operated through a remote control and we wanted them to be integrated into our buttons on the dashboard. So looking inside, they have thankfully used an inexpensive 433 megahertz receiver. These are one-way communication devices and any bits you send on one side will show up on the other. Now to hack in. However, I prefer the term forced integration. I remove the receiver and connect it to the Arduino Nano. Using the RC switch library, you can decode these messages. The link is down in the description for an excellent write-up on how to do this. But now, when we push a button, we can see the message. This will display the message header in the bit position for each button. Here you can see the two bit shift when I press button A, B, C, and D. All we have to do now is play them back to simulate a remote button press. Connecting one wire to the Arduino to simulate the remote control and three inputs for our buttons, the lights are now integrated into our power wheel dashboard. By the way, I'm using the PCB from the Mother Clucker Exit Door project. I have more on this board in the future video, but I'm very happy with the progress that I made on it and want to share it with you. Now, finding a place for everything. There is tons of room in this power wheel, so there wasn't much of an issue finding a home for everything. I did also add a 10 watt 120 ohm resistor to reduce the volume of this horn. Then finished off the horn integration by mounting the horn microphone to the dashboard. It was worth mentioning that since I was building this as a Christmas gift, I always had to have a portion of the vehicle under a tarp that I could quickly pull over if my daughter walked into the garage, which she did several times and a couple times by my wife just to mess with me. I completed wiring everything up and forgot to put a resistor on the horn button LEDs. So I blew them out instantly. Luckily, that was my only wiring mistake, and good thing because I was running out of time. The Gravedigger originally had red front lights, so I printed out clear lenses and replaced the LEDs with white ones. I applied some stickers, added some accent tape around the edges, and the transformation from monster truck to monster fire truck was complete. On to the Christmas reveal. 
My daughter loved it, and we were able to recycle this toy for another couple years before passing it on again. Get the push the side. <laughs> Please let me know of any questions or comments and thank you so much for your attention. I know everything on YouTube is fighting for it, so I'm happy and grateful you spent your time with me. Well, I didn't think you'd still be here, but if you're wondering about that jar of screws, I used them all, except for these. And I have no idea where they go.